I am super jazzed to return to Chimera as we think about protein quaternary structure. Remember that a protein has quaternary structure if there's more than one polypeptide chain, aka more than one subunit. We're going to look at an epic example of a protein, an enzyme, that has more than one subunit. You're going to want to fetch PDB number 6GFW and pull that into your Chimera. Um, this example is RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase has many subunits. It has two alpha subunits, two beta subunits, and then it has an omega and a sigma subunit. Sigma subunit is my favorite. It's called a promiscuous subunit, meaning that when RNA polymerase is getting started with its job, which is to read DNA to make RNA, sigma factor will stay associated with the enzyme. But once the enzyme has gotten started making the RNA, sigma subunit's like, hey, I'm out of here, and it gets the heck out of Dodge and goes off to associate with another RNA polymerase enzyme. That's why it's called promiscuous. So let's take a moment to um, change our presets to interactive ones so we can start to see a color differentiated um, model that allows us to differentiate subunits. But then we should also go ahead to the um, protein data bank itself and go ahead and click on, um, remember you can click on display files and the PDB format and that's what I've done here. This is going to allow us to determine which of the chains that we see on Chimera is our, which of our um, subunits. So, for example, we can recognize that chain A and B are the alpha subunits, whereas chain C and D are beta subunits. And if we look at chain E, that's our omega subunit. So, um, finding chain E, omega, and then so on forth. If we look at chain F and G, these are actually our DNA. Um, and then if we look for um, chain M, that's where we see our sigma, our sigma subunit, so um, the RNA polymerase sigma 54 factor. So if we return back to Chimera, we can go to select and pick on those chains. So we can see the alpha subunit um, by clicking on chain A and B, and you can see it highlighted there. And we can select B is another alpha subunit. And then we could select chain C and D to start to get a handle on where the beta subunits are. These are very large subunits that serve as clamps around the DNA. And you can get, get a look here at the DNA. So if we go ahead and select um, chain F or G, we're going to start to see our DNA get highlighted there. Um, lastly, the, the very last chain on here is going to be a small region of RNA getting started synthesized uh, using the DNA template. Um, so we can also find a sigma, our epic uh, promiscuous subunit. So um, sigma is chain M. And so we can recognize this primarily alpha helical subunit um, that is promiscuous, that will associate with the core enzyme at the very beginning um, while the DNA is getting opened up and ready to be read to turn into RNA. So this helps us get a sense of quaternary, protein quaternary structure. And here in Protein Data Bank, if we wanted to see what happens once the RNA, um, or here in Chimera, we could see what would happen once the promiscuous sigma subunit would leave the enzyme um, by just saying, hey, let's delete that subunit. Um, and then we can see that go away. Okay, now we see how the core enzyme might proceed down the DNA, reading the DNA. Um, and making the RNA from that. Now, a couple important things that we should recognize about quaternary structure. Um, in quaternary structure, we often will see things like dimers, uh, tetramers, where we get subunits that um, very much look alike. Um, or sometimes we see this differential, you know, but we still see like the alpha subunits and the beta subunits still uh, have that sort of dimeric structure. 
one of the important things about quaternary structure is to note that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Um, that is to say that a subunit alone is not highly functional. So if we were to delete one of the, the beta, select and delete one of the beta uh, chain, we could recognize that the other beta chain without this beta chain would not be particularly highly functional. And it's interesting to note that um, it is actually incredibly easy to separate subunits within a protein with quaternary structure because remember they're held together by electrostatic interactions. But those interfaces between subunits are extremely important to the function of a protein. Um, Multi-subunit proteins enzymes they, they often have their active sites at the interfaces between subunits and the magic, you could say this, the magic happens at the interfaces between the subunit. Now we are going to actually look at one other example of something with quaternary structure so that I can show you something that is very much uh, dimeric. Um, and this is we want to look at the protease enzyme. Protease is a very famous enzyme that is used by the HIV virus um, to cut up its proteins into their fully functional form. So this um, PDB number is just 1DMP. We'll pull that in. And let's go ahead and do the interactive one as well. And then this is really cool because we can see the dimeric structure and then we can see how the action happens at the interfaces between the subunits um, of this HIV-1 protease enzyme. And this enzyme does the cleaving of the large polyprotein that will form functional viral proteins. Thus, you might have guessed it, um, we make drugs to target um, protease like crazy because protease inhibitors, part of a standard um, antiretroviral cocktail or highly anti active antiretroviral uh, therapy, heart therapy for HIV, um, protease inhibitors are a standard part of that.